Hi everybody, Kathy and Jeff here. We're going to be making a video for each of the fourth grade science units. Because the units often have multiple standards, we'll make a video on what we feel is the must-do topic for each of these units. This particular video will introduce you to Unit 3. This unit focuses on slow changes to Earth's surface. This and all units can be found on Atlas. By the end of the unit, the students will have these enduring understandings. Weathering and erosion cause slow changes to the development of and change in landforms. Weathering is where rocks and minerals are broken down by the elements of nature into smaller pieces. Acid rain is an example of weathering. Erosion is the process of moving sediment from one place to another. Deposition is the dropping of bits of rock and soil by a river or a stream, wind, or a glacier over long periods of time. Fossils are the remains of traces of plants or animals that lived a long time ago and help us to determine a timeline for changes to Earth's surface. In addition, students will be using many science skills. These include making observations and collecting data to provide evidence that rocks, soils, and sediments are broken into smaller pieces through mechanical weathering. Making observations and collecting data to provide evidence that sediments are moved around through erosion. Using evidence from a given landscape to support a claim about the role of erosion or deposition in the formation of the landscape over a long period of time. Identifying the causes and effects of mechanical weathering. Explaining how fossils form and what they tell us about the changes to Earth's surface. Our investigation is adapted from a DESI model unit. If you visit the department's website, they'll send you a link to the unit. There are four lessons as part of this unit, but often numerous investigations per lesson. For our must-do investigation, we've chosen lesson two, investigations three, and four. The unit has some great resources, including videos, picture cards, and some terrific web links. These can be found at the end of the model DESI unit. Here's a slide showing you some of the picture cards that you could use in this unit. Before we get into the investigation itself, there are certain prerequisites. Science norms, such as how to handle science materials and move about the classroom, need to have been discussed already. Students need to have practiced making close observations and recording in a science journal. In addition, students should be comfortable measuring with a ruler, preferably using centimeters as the unit. In terms of prior learning, students learned in second grade that water is found in oceans, lakes, and ponds. Water exists as solid ice and also in liquid form. Also, students need to know that wind and water can change the shape of the land. We're going to be using the 5E learning cycle to put this unit together. For our Engage, there's a three-minute Study Jams video on weathering and erosion. Let's take a look at that video. Let's see if I've got this weathering and erosion song and dance down first. Weathering and erosion work together and change the environment. Weathering breaks things down and can be physical or chemical. Erosion actually moves the sediment that weathering leaves behind. Together, they're constantly changing our environment. Looks like someone just got all their studying done. There are also some good Bill Nye videos on YouTube. Next, you need to plan for the explore. This is where the real investigating takes place. Remember, don't worry about science vocabulary at this point. We're going to start out with an activity from the DESI unit, Lesson 2, Investigations into Different Forces that Cause Erosion. The essential question is, what causes changes to the landscape where we live? Anticipated student misconceptions might be, students might think that the Earth is unchanging, or the changes to Earth are random, Rock is so hard that nothing can break it, or that materials that are moved by erosion just disappear. So first we're going to take a look at the effect of wind on Earth's surface. The demonstration that we're going to show you would take about 10 minutes of class time. The materials include shallow aluminum pans. And a strategy you could use to prevent a mess would be to put this pan in a large cardboard box and that would keep the sand from blowing out of the pan. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> All right, so we're going to also be using some sand and a ruler. So here's the procedure. 
Place the pan inside that cardboard box to prevent mess, and we're gonna make a pile of sand at one end of the box. So, tell me when. Now that's probably pretty good. So our pile of sand, hopefully you can see, is all uh, organized at one end of the aluminum pan. So next we're gonna measure and record the height of that sand using our centimeter ruler. This is also a good time to revisit where the zero actually is on the ruler. So when we measure the height of our sand, at my highest point I've got about three centimeters and on the sides I'm down to about one centimeter. So as students are recording this, they would need to make that diagram that the, the pile of sand is actually more like a pyramid sort of shape three centimeters in the center and down to one centimeter on the edges. So next you're gonna stand on one end of the box and blow air into the pile of sand for about 20 seconds. So I think we need to turn this so you're blowing from this end, yeah. All right, let's pretend that's 20 seconds. So obviously Jeff was using his lung capacity to try and move the sand across the pan. A couple other ways that you could do this. Using the syringe. Or maybe a turkey baster, or perhaps even a fan on a very, very low cycle. So hopefully you can see in this uh, image that the sand has been moved from the pile down across the end of the pan. So what we do now is measure and record the height of the sand and then any other observations that we notice, especially about the appearance and texture of that original pile and what the rest of the pan looks like. So when I put the ruler back in, the, um, the main crown of the sand pile is now down to two centimeters and my edges are moving closer to a half centimeter. I'm also noticing that there's a lot of sand that's moved from the original pile throughout the, um, the aluminum pan. And it's interesting to note that it wants to aggregate around the edges, and that might be a topic of conversation with the students. Why do you think the sand moved in that way? Yes. Uh, assistants check the quality of student recordings and illustrations, as well as whether their notebook will support later analysis. When you wrap up, ask the students, what did you notice about the effects of the wind on the sand and where did the sand move to? So again, we like this as a demonstration just for the, um, the mess factor. We're gonna show you another activity that we'll get students hand on in just a second. Next, we'll look at the effects of waves and precipitation or flowing water. This activity should take about 15 minutes and would be a great hands-on activity for the students. The materials include the shallow aluminum pan, a mix of sand and some pebbles or small rocks, water, and a ruler. Here's the procedure. Okay, so we're gonna take this um, mix of wet sand and pebbles and we're gonna pour it at one end of the pan. You really have to spend time mixing that so that it's consistent, wet sand and pebbles. and you can see that we have that nice little pile of um, the wet sand and pebble combination. Nice. Okay. Next, you're gonna carefully pour water into the pan to a depth of about an inch. That's all around the pan, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and stop. So the depth of water shouldn't really be higher than the pile of sand that you had. So the one inch you're gonna give or take a little bit, okay. okay? Using a ruler, measure and record the height of the pile. Right, so once again in my centimeters, the height of the pile at the center is gonna be about four and a half centimeters. Um, probably the diameter of this pile of sand is about, about nine centimeters. Make a rough sketch of the contents of the pan in your science journal. Record your observation about the appearance and the texture of the surface of the pile. With your hand at the end of the pan, opposite the pile, make five individual waves pushing the water towards the pile. The waves should not be so... They shouldn't be <laughs> so big as to make a mess. 
All right, hold on. Let's show the folks a picture of what this looks like before you send in the waves. Okay. All right, so here we're going to go ahead and introduce the waves. So it's five waves. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Not quite Hurricane Irma, but still pretty significant. Um, so then what you're going to do is ask the students to once again measure and record the height of the pile, see if they can measure and record once again the diameter, and make careful observation as to what happened to the materials in the pan. So we're going to pause now and show you a picture of what the wave action, um, what the result of the wave action actually was. A suggested closing question could be, how was the appearance and the texture of the surface of the pile and how has it changed? What did you observe about the effects of the wave action on the materials in the pile and where did the materials go? And I think the key, the first question was the composition of that original pile where we had it tightly packed with the, the wet sand and the gravel. It's now clearly separating out into the two component parts. So the observation and um, detail is going to be key for students on this. And lastly, let's take a look at the effect of precipitation. And this activity, again, hands-on for the students, should take about 20 minutes. The materials, once again, are our shallow aluminum pan, some potting soil, and also work with a mixture of the sand, let's bring that back, sand, life in Worcester, <laughs> a mixture of sand, gravel, and some clay. When you're using clay, there's real earth clay, or you could even put in some modeling clay if you had to do that. So the other part you need for this, um, ideally, is the watering can or some sort of a cup that can um, easily pour water into the pan. So let's take a look at the procedure. Go ahead, Jeff. Make a large pile of soil in the middle of the pan and leave some empty space around the pan, around the pile. So uh, just. So in this case, our soil's pretty dry. So one of the variables you could work with students is if you have dry soil like this, which really is pretty dry dirt, or if the soil was a little bit more moist, normally like you might find in a garden. Okay, so once again, we're gonna measure the height of the pile um, and maybe the diameter, record those observations about the appearance and texture and the measurements of the, the soil. And then next, we're going to carefully pour water onto the pile of soil using a slow, steady stream from the watering can. <laughs> Pretty sad watering can. <laughs> All right, so this is supposed to um, model precipitation rain, ideally, but it's more like globs of water falling from the sky. So here's our rain. <laughs> have to do this I think we're good. Here's our rainstorm. All right. So go ahead, Jeff. What do we do next? So I'm going to tilt the pan for you to take a look at our dry soil really didn't absorb much of the water at all. This is interesting. It mm -hmm. seemed like the water all ran off the dry soil. So I definitely think the um, comparing dry soil to wet, which could really show how a sudden downfall or a monsoon can affect uh, an area that's been stricken in doubt and lead to drought, sorry, and lead to flooding. Okay, so right. go ahead. Um, so once again, we're going to measure and record our observations. Repeat the investigation with sand, soil, gravel, and clay, that mixture. The expectation would be that the sand, soil, gravel, clay mixture would have less erosion and deposition. So talk about the questions you might ask the students to wrap up this unit. So one of the questions would be, how has the appearance and the texture of the surface of the soil changed? Where has the soil moved to? In the mixture, was there more of the material left in the pile? And how has the appearance and texture of the surface of the mixture changed? Which materials moved and where to? Okay, so we're going to now take an up-close picture to show you the effect of the, the precipitation on our dry soil, so you can see that effect. In the 5E learning cycle, our next E is explained. Ideally, you could do this E during ELA time block. 
Your HSP textbooks, pages 340 to 347, are a good informational text. This is also where we would introduce vocabulary. In the Atlas unit, you'll find vocabulary lists in the knowledge section of the unit. We could also read an informational text from a source like ReadWorks. There's a great text for erosion here. You'll find that resource in the Atlas unit um, as well. Another resource for this explain stage is to watch this two minute video from PBS Learning Media. You could pose the question, how might these procedures change landscapes where we live? The elaborate or extend could be another investigation from the DESI unit. There's a great one on how glaciers affect landforms and you can take a look at lesson number three, investigation five. You'll find the link in the next slide. Evaluate might be asking the students to create a brochure or a public service annou announcement on the subject of weathering, erosion, and deposition. Students could meet with first graders and talk with them about changing landforms. That's a great idea. So we hope that you found this video useful. Remember, email if you have any questions. And continue to look at Atlas for additional unit videos. We'll be building a video for each unit and adding resources as we go throughout the year. We want to make teaching science something you enjoy doing with your students because you know science, science matters. matters.